What is up, most distinguished patrons of this channel? So we are going to cover a sort of part two, sort of, I'm just screwing around in the shop and I thought I would provide additional information to you guys dealing with polarity in the previous video I made. So let's get into it. So this video is sort of in a response to both myself as well as a ton of the comments that I got on the polarity video I just released, which if you're watching this and you have not seen that video, watch that one first, link in the description. So anyways, back to what we're talking about. We covered a ton of polarity with stick welding, with TIG welding, with MIG welding in the previous video, and I had an immense amount of comments, uh, well, really good comments too, by the way, some disagreements over things, and I thought I was selling that video a little bit short, and in fact, I didn't do a cut and etch, and kind of just made statements such as, well, DCEN with stick has less penetration than DCEP. Some of you disagree with that. Well, I'm going to prove today that that is the case, among other things, but I'm also going to explain why. So that's kind of the premise of what we're doing here. And I'm between shooting videos on TIG welding, and I thought, well, what better time to do it than now, since I have a little bit of downtime. So anyway, speaking of stick welding, I have two 6013 rods in front of us. In the first part of this video, we're going to run one rod on DCEP and one rod on DCEN, and we're going to cut and etch them and look at the penetration. Now, I'm going to make a bold prediction, and very rarely am I wrong when I make a prediction, but hey, it can happen. DCEP will have more penetration than DCEN. Now, if you watch my polarity video, that might be slightly confusing because DCEN polarity produces a narrower arc cone. And you would think that a narrow, more focused arc cone would mean more penetration. The problem is, is that in a case of stick welding, that is simply not the case. And welding in general is one of these things that it's kind of full of enigmas and puzzles. And what I mean by that is what works for one process is not what works for all processes. And a prime example would be TIG welding. TIG welding, if you were to try and weld on DCEP, well, first off, you're going to smoke your tungsten, but say the tungsten didn't melt, you're going to have less penetration. We know that because when you weld aluminum, you have massively less penetration on AC than you do on DC with helium. Now, part of that is the helium gas, but part of it is with TIG, electrode negative produces more penetration. So the question is, well, why wouldn't that be the case with stick welding? And it's actually a somewhat of a complex reason, but I'll give you my understanding. So when you weld DCEP, the very tip of this rod is melting off and more or less throwing droplets across the arc gap onto your molten pool, okay? When you weld on DCEN, the tip of the rod does not get very hot. You more or less have an established arc, but it's not throwing super hot molten metal across the arc. Therefore, two things. One, what little bit of force you have from those droplets jumping across the arc gap is gone. And two, the metal that does cross the arc gap from the rod tip is not nearly as hot or nearly as much volume on negative versus positive polarity. Therefore, what ends up happening is your weld will beat up like caulk. So with stick welding, even though the electrode negative, which you can run 6013 on, produces a narrower, more focused arc, it's actually less useful for stick welding because of how much the molten metal sits on top of the plate and now you have to weld through that. One of the things you guys got to keep in mind is that all welding processes that are done by hand anyways have very limited penetration. And if you're trying to weld through say a quarter inch thick of molten metal that isn't spreading out, what ends up happening is you lose penetration. So it's not so much that the negative arc doesn't penetrate deeper, it's that the way the bead sits, you have to weld through a thicker bead, which is going to limit how much penetration you have, because you're more or less just 
welding on top of the weld per se. And I think that's the primary reason why it has less penetration. Now, I'm only doing flat plate and we're going to cut and etch it. I have a feeling, and as a matter of fact, I know for a fact because I've done this in the past, I've welded a fillet weld DCEN and the results are even worse on a fillet weld because you guys got to remember you have a 90 degree corner that somewhat limits the ability of the weld to flow out. Well, guess what? When you weld it on negative, where it's more or less confined to a smaller area, you're now welding through even thicker of a molten pool than you would have on negative, so your penetration is even less. And that is why 6013, especially in 1 16th rods, the little sparklers, are commonly run DC electrode negative because it limits penetration and it can get you out of a tight spot welding holes in sheet metal on negative polarity. So with that said, let's go and run two welds, cut them, etch them, talk about the results, and I will also, after that's done, do MIG welding and, and show that. Well, I got the test specimens cut and etched, so let's take a look at them. So here are the two beads. The one on the right is run DCEP, the one on the left DCEN. We're quite a bit zoomed in here, so it looks rougher than it actually looks in person. The DCEN weld is slightly narrower overall, and the weld pool didn't seem to wet out as good. Here is a cut and etch. Now this is a really bad angle and the photo just sucks so I apologize for that but I drew a line to give a rough indication and it's going to be pretty hard to tell but the DCEP has slightly better penetration approximately a 32nd of an inch maybe a little bit more. That's not a night and day difference but remember this is a flat plate run in a flat position had this been a fillet weld, the difference would have been far more significant, I have a feeling. The overall weld is more rounded for the penetration, so more overall sidewall. Fusion, if you were welding something like a fillet weld with the electrode positive. Again, not a huge difference. It's subtle, but it's there. Now, MIG, on the other hand, let's look at that. I'm going to run two beads just like I did on this test. So here is the overall bead profile. It's tough to tell, but the EP weld is wider and flatter. The EN weld on the left is much taller and much narrower. And here on the cut and etch, we got a massive difference. This is probably one of the biggest differences I've ever seen doing a cut and etch. And keep in mind, the plate was preheated because I ran that pass on the right with the EP and then I ran the EN right afterwards, so if anything, it's the best case scenario. And this is an exact example of why you have to have the right polarity for short circuit MIG to work. Now in theory, could you run EN on auto body or something really thin? I suppose you could, but with a good welder, 
a really good MIG welder can, with 023, 024 wire can weld 22 gauge without blowing a hole on EP. So I don't really see much of a reason to run EN. And keep in mind, the same weld metal roughly was deposited, but look at how high it was. It didn't wet out and it just stacked on there and that would be extra material you have to remove. This is far more significant of a difference in the stick welding, but keep in mind that the process has far better penetration than 6013 does. When you run stick rods like 7018 on EN, the difference is actually far more noticeable, I think, than what you're going to find with the 6013 rods. Well, anyways, let's move on. So, did those results surprise you at all? Probably not for most of you. Some of you it might have. And the truth is, is that I've done quite a number of tests like this long before I ever had a channel just to experiment on my own. And I've been well aware of this phenomenon, not just in my own tests, but also in reading in literature from Miller Electric and Lincoln Electric and all of those, okay? And this is fairly well known. Now, there's some caveats to this that I didn't talk about. So, a couple readers, likely from over in UK, where you guys have a lot of different kinds of 6013, suggested that certain rods are designed to run DCEN. Now, I can tell you for me personally, in the United States, there are no rods that are conventionally available that are labeled for DCEN that I'm aware of. Okay, it just doesn't exist. Now, plenty of rods will run on that, but sold to you as a consumer for the sole purpose of running on EN, that doesn't exist here in this country. And due to how stick welding as well as MIG welding works, I fail to see how running electrode negative in any circumstance with stick or gas shielded MIG would result in more penetration. I just don't see that happening. Your results may be different. Now, this really goes to show how important it is to actually test your stuff because you saw what I got today with my welders. Hey, if you do a test and somehow you get different results, I'll be honest, I don't think you're going to, but so be it. That's the importance of doing stuff and verifying. One of the issues I found when I was learning to weld is what I call misinformation. Now, I have made mistakes and said certain things on this channel that I'm sure are wrong. And that's why, well, it's important to read the comments where smarter people than me will add things to what I said. And that will give you the big picture because you want the big picture. You know, I can only share what I know to the extent of my knowledge. There's far more knowledgeable people out there that contribute to this channel. So it's important to read that. But anyways, going back to what I was saying. There's a ton of stuff out in welding that are like hard and fast rules that somehow are used as gospel, I guess, and yet they're wrong. Probably the best example of that is I can't count how many times people have told me personally that I need to push my weld with MIG in order to get better penetration, yet in every test I've done, as well as virtually all tests that everyone else has done, shows the exact opposite, that pulling at a minimum slightly increases penetration. And that's a great example because, well, the, the internet isn't always right, just like I'm not always right. And that's why it is so important that you test your results because you can't go by what a weld looks like. When you saw these 6013 welds, they don't really look that different, yet guess what? There's a significant difference in fusion, not nearly as much as what the short circuit MIG is. Now, just on a visual observation, this tall ropey bead profile doesn't look good, and you would probably say, hey, that's a cold bead. Yet, it was the same settings for both of these. And had someone stacked multiple of these welds on something, you might not notice that ropiness, especially because you got to remember, I pulled these welds. I did not push them. Had I pushed it, it probably would have had a little bit flatter of a profile. And you might not realize how bad the fusion really is until you actually did a cut and edge. So it's imperative that you test stuff yourself. In order to finish this video off, let's talk about all the processes and the polarity they run on. So anyways, 
Here's a simple chart we're going to fill out quickly that explains polarity of what you would use. So we have DCEP, DCEN, and AC. So stick welding, DCEP is the primary polarity. That is known as reverse polarity. The electrons are hitting the tip of the rod. The rod tip is getting very hot and it's spraying or more or less globular transferring large amounts of metal. This is the preferred polarity. Stick welding 7018, 6013, 7014, and 6010, and 11. All of those primarily run on DCEP. 6013 can also run on DCEN, and it can also run on AC. Get that crammed in there. 7018 can also run on AC. However, pro tip to you guys, if you don't buy the 7018 AC rods, some of the 7018s don't run that well. So you tombstone welders, avoid the just willy-nilly any brand 7018. Odds are it probably won't run properly. So if you're on AC only, get the AC 7018 rods. Now 7014 can also run on AC along with, I didn't put it on here, 7024 can as well. Now this is where things get interesting. Technically, most of these rods will weld on DCEN. They will. The problem is you're going to see results just like you saw in this video and you're going to lose penetration. You're going to have a high ropey bead profile and there's not a huge benefit. The reason I put 6013 under here is that 6013 and to a certain extent 7014 are commonly or well somewhat commonly run on electrode negative. The reason is is that when you're using them little sparkler rods, that can help you weld auto body sheet metal. It's still not easy. It still sucks. I've done it. It's terrible, but it can help you. So you're not going to be using 7018 to weld auto body. You're not going to be welding with 6010 to weld auto body. And 6011 116th rods, yeah, you probably could run those on DCEN, but yeah, it sucks. Also, it goes without saying, you do not want to run these rods, especially 7018, 6010, on a polarity other than what they're designed for and then try and weld some kind of code work where they specify polarity because guess what? You're going to have problems for the previously mentioned reasons. Now, short circuit MIG, which is your C25 gas, your C100, etc., you are going to be running DC. EP. I think we all can agree on that based on the results that we saw when we ran uh, DCEN, straight polarity, how bad it is. So that is not an option. AC is not an option. I'm not aware of any <laughs> MIG welder that welds on AC, and if it does exist, it's probably from World War II, and you're not using it anyways because it doesn't work because it's so old. Spray arc, DCEP. Same polarity, imagine that is short circuit MIG. Dual shield, DCEP once again. Now, I did not put on here, but I'll put a little caveat here. Flux core. Flux core is an outlier. That's DCEN. And if you have a very cheap Harbor Freight flux core welder, that welds on AC them Chicago electrics, guess what? They output AC and you just produce massive amounts of spatter and poor penetration. So no, I mean, yeah, it will run, but no, you shouldn't. So DCEN. And I understand that's confusing because in this video we saw that EP has more penetration. The reason, and I kind of mentioned it in a previous video, self-shielded flux core is such a thin wall tube at low wire feed, I have a feeling that if you were to attempt to run a DCEP, the wire would just blow up and you would just make massive amounts of spatter. The weld pool itself, it doesn't deposit that much metal. It's more like 6010, therefore your weld pool is real thin and you can get penetration with the process, especially because it's more or less functioning closer to spray arc than it is short circuit. So the wire isn't stabbing the puddle. So it's really a combination of 
thin molten pool, very low metal deposition, very strong arc due to the shielding gas created that allow it to, oh, and thin tubes, so, you know, small diameter, that allow it to run on DCN and get results. However, there are self-shielded flux cores that also run on DCEP, so you got to pay attention to that. Like stainless steel is one of those that will run DCEP only. It performs poorly on DCEN. Once again, though, I think the dual shield is able to run that because of the high wire feed. You are feeding probably double the wire feed of standard gasless flux core to get decent results. And that is why it can handle the current of EP versus EN. Because you got to remember, flux core gasless is typically only used in cheaper, you know, home hobby machines that don't have much power. They certainly don't have enough power to run dual shield. So you kind of are limited more or less by the original intended purpose of most of the wires. What I find is the flux core gasless wires out there that are running on DCEP that are for like industrial use, those all have very high wire feed. They don't function like the home stuff, okay? Now TIG, DCEN, if you run DCEP or any high amount of it, you're going to blow the tungsten up. Now you can obviously weld it on AC, which is why I put this here, AC TIG. AC TIG as well, AC TIG. AC on TIG is a balance of both electrode positive and electrode negative. It heavily favors electrode negative, because if you remember in the previous video, positive <laughs> electrode means that the tungsten melts. So 100% EP melted tungsten. AC on TIG is about 20 to 35% EP and the remaining uh, EN. That way the tungsten stays far more cool and it stays in one piece. It still helps to ball the tungsten to hold the current though at above about 160 amps, but that's a whole nother video in itself on that. So the truth is, is that this is a general overview. It won't solve all situations or all welding processes, but this is a pretty accurate, hard, true, fast rules. And going outside of this is very uncommon and probably will not net you better results. So that's something to keep in mind. Let's go to conclusion. All right, so in conclusion, what did we learn today? Well, we learned that if you understand polarity, you can accurately predict results. And I was able to make a pretty bold statement as to what we would find on this before I welded it. And sure enough, the results coincide with my prediction. And that's really why it's so important to understand the behind the scenes about what's going on when you're welding, because it helps you be a better welder because you can predict what's gonna happen. Now, truth be told, all of this information is pretty much publicly available through Lincoln Electric and Miller if you really search their site under information and guides. They're wonderful places to go for more information, so feel free to look at their sites, links in the description, by the way, to gather more information because I'm one source of information. You should never take my word or any other buddy's word completely is gospel. We're human. We all make mistakes. I make mistakes. And that's why in so many of my videos, I demonstrate what I'm saying and explain what's going on so that we all have a better idea of it. And then we can learn from that. Because I personally find it pretty boring to just read what happens about something like running DCEN with MIG, it's it's so much more fun to try it. And that's why I encourage you guys to try opposite polarity of what you would normally use with your welding process. And you'll find out in a very quick hurry why every welding process has a preferred polarity. And with that said, as always, if you got any comments, questions, thoughts on this, you know where to leave them. Until next time.